Searching for resources. Okay, James is here. James, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Now, how much time do you spend fundraising? Be truthful. How much time do you spend fundraising? Director and adjunct professor of CAPSI at the Wits Business School, Professor Begin Kosimoyo, is also a prominent writer, author, researcher, and thought leader in African resources, democracy, and governance. The fellows were treated to an extended and brilliant masterclass in fundraising and resource mobilization by Professor Moyo. I come to this uh, module personally um, as the chair of AROXA. So that means I have huge interest in making sure that AROXA succeeds. And this fellowship, I actually did it myself. So I've got uh, some experience in the implications, but also the advantages of this fellowship. But equally so, I also made a transition from two organizations. And in making those transitions, I've learned a great deal about how succession planning, uh, resource mobilization and transitions are important either for the success or the collapse of an organization. All right. So what we are going to do today in this class, one is I want you to understand the process of fundraising. So if, if anything, by the time you leave here, you should understand the process of fundraising. But it's a multi-dimensional discipline, so there's no one straightforward process or answer. There's a lot of money that flows uh, through foundations, through philanthropy. You can see one of the reports uh, previously showed that uh, about 24 billion uh, US dollars uh, went through philanthropic foundations in one year, right? Uh, but but if you if you then look at that, uh, what does that say? It, it shows that only. 28% went to Africa. Um, what we found was that a lot of the money was earmarked Africa, but actually it ended up with organizations that are based in the North, but they are working in Africa, right? Yes. But the money does not come directly to African organizations. It goes to their offices. It pays their salaries and everything there. And then, uh, and then a small amount comes down to, to Africa, yeah? But obviously, there's still a need for us to decolonize funding because there's still a, a perception that we are not capable. Uh, you are corrupt. Uh, and so those things are still there. So you have to manage that. But you have to be very uh, astute, like I said, to understand those dynamics. All American foundations of philanthropic money that came to Africa, 70% was, was given by the Gates Foundation. So if you take out Gates in the equation, everything changes completely, right? It means then the biggest foundation is one that contributes only 4%. The power that a donor has in terms of their resources is something that you must understand. We've had traditional ways of raising funds, like writing proposals and having events to raise money, but uh, having learning about uh, more ways of fundraising. I need a succession plan to guide others who will, be, who will be coming after me. It's given me a challenge on how I can be able to do things different. It's always good to grow. It's good to grow and to move forward. By the time I, I, I retire or exit, you know, I will make sure that the organization is able to run itself as a business.